Good morning, everyone. I'm working on an iPhone 6s that came in with, uh, well, this, this, the description was no power not detected in iTunes, but whenever it came in here, it actually will boot up to a white screen with the black Apple logo. Um, so I've seen quite a few iPhone 5s's and some iPhone 6s do this whenever they have defective TriStar ICs. So um, I should probably do a little more troubleshooting on this one. I imagine there's a, a lot of other stuff that could cause this thing to hang up at, the, at a white screen and an Apple logo. But um, I'm going to just kind of throw one at it and say, I bet this is the TriStar IC, especially since the customer's description was um, no power, not detected in iTunes, so it actually came in like it had a blank screen. Um, I'm willing to bet this is a TriStar IC, so th this is going to be a one-eyed TriStar IC replacement. Um, our shop is going to be opening here in about five minutes, so I'll probably have some interruptions, but um, I've already got the board out of it. I have got the microscope on it. Let's see if everything switches without freezing. It did. So here is our lovely TriStar IC. We're probably going to be up to like the iPhone 10s Plus and I'm still going to be sitting here replacing TriStar <laughs> TriStar ICs. All right, get the microscope set right. I typically don't use much of any shielding when I'm doing VGA rework like this because it's just you wind up using a ton more heat. I'm seeing people that are using some crazy temperatures on their hot air station and having to leave it on there for a really long time. Um, and like on an iPhone 6, you have to use a shit ton of heat anyways. So uh, if you add a, a copper heat sink in there, then you wind up using a shit ton more heat. So um, this should work pretty good. I've actually only done this on a 6S Plus one other time. I'm hoping it doesn't take as much heat as an iPhone 6 does. So I'm setting my hot air to 380C with the airflow at 40%. And I wish this thing had presets or a knob I could turn because it takes me forever to get to 380C. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of flux. Mm, that's more like a lot of it, but it'll work. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so I can see both ends of the board in my view. I have to really watch where my hot air is. I don't want to melt anything that's going to cause me to take forever on this repair. So. We'll start working the temperature up here. I think I can grab over here to the left side of this IC. Yes, I can, without disturbing anything else. Now, I'm not real familiar with where this one's going to melt, so I'm going to go ahead and get my tweezers ready. Just giving it a, a slight little nudge here, left and right. There it's moving, and away we go. Heat's off. Oh, you know what? I almost made a critical mistake. I still got it in my tweezers. I guess since I'm recording a video, I could always go back and look. I forgot to take note of the orientation. And myself, even if it's a job I've been through a bunch of times, except for touch IC repairs, I put a little arrow somewhere. That actually don't look much like an arrow in the video, but to my eyes, I can see it amongst, and this is a previous repair attempt too. Somebody else has attempt board, attempted board level work on this. They've had shields unsoldered and soldered back on. So there is some other scratching there on that shield. You can't really tell which is mine, but I can. I know the orientation of that chip. So I'm gonna go open our shop and then come back and finish this repair. Hopefully it fixes it. Okay. So yes, I'm not going to be too concerned about lead-free versus leaded solder on this repair. But I am going to be concerned about doing this without my left eye because, like I said, I'm going to be dragging a ball of solder around the top of all these pads. I am not wicking them. And um, I also don't want to take my ball of solder and, and bump this stuff around it. So let's see how this goes. And let's see how this focuses. Do it with one eye. You know, I, I really can't do that with one eye. 
because I can't tell how, how high my ball is, so... There we go. Oh, wow. You know, if I got in here with a micro pencil, I might be able to pull this off with one eye. But a lot of these pads are ground, and when you're trying to do this with the micro pencil, um, it can be an absolute nightmare to get it to pull the solder off of the pads uh, when they're ground because the heat dissipation is just, it's so high. This is turning out like garbage. definitely got a ground pad on there in the corner. I would have never done that with a micro pencil. I barely do it with the tip of the full size iron. So, microscope. Get microscope my eye. I'm going to focus it up and show you what the sight looks like. So rather than wicking, I just I hover a ball of solder across the top of these pads. And that has proven to be a very reliable of cleaning things up to set a new IC on here. Uh, a very reliable way of doing it. So I put an arrow on this board. It is an up arrow, sort of. It's mixed into the last text scratches. So you can't really tell. And then let's grab a new 1610A3. Although since I started ordering my ICs from more reliable sources, I haven't I haven't had any of these that look like they're just water damaged garbage reballed with big chunks missing out of them and somebody selling them just hoping to God they work or banking on people that buy them that don't know what they're doing and blaming themselves rather than the chip. Right now I'm looking for, I don't know if you can see that, I'm looking, yeah you can see it, I'm looking for a spot to set that chip out of the way. Yeah, I think some of these places they bank on the people that buy it not knowing what they're doing so they can sell them garbage and get away with it. I wonder if I got a smudge on the mirror, I just, I can't, can't really seem to focus that. I guess that's what I get for what I paid for that. This is going to be an ever-loving nightmare with one eye. With one eye, it's hard for me to even see where my uh, where my hot air is positioned. So I'm doing it by ear. I'm listening to where it's hitting. I'm going over the top of the board. And coming down so I can I can hear the hot air starting to hit. See that was a one eyed mistake too push down on the edge of the chip because I can't tell how high I am with my tweezers. I can tell where I'm at this way but not up and down. Um, I'm going to botch that with one eye and I have way too much going on today to botch this so soon. Simulfocal. Oh man, yeah I can do my job now. It'd be silly to botch one just for the sake of video. Um, I'd really like to show you guys, but I'm not going to do this repair twice or spend a bunch of extra time fixing shit just because I wanted to show off in front of a camera. Alright, it's melted. It's floating. I'm going to bump it on the edge. We're not there yet. 
All right, quick snap back. That is solid. Cut it off. For some reason, the corner ball always looks grainy under this microscope. The last TriStar I see I did on an iPhone 6 looked that way, and it was just like an artifact of the flux clearing. So I'm going to look at it here with my own eyes and make sure that looks good. If it does, I won't do anything else. is a glare on the flux. The ball itself looks good. I'm going to hit that with some alcohol and make sure I'm not telling any lies. Okay, a lot of interruptions, a lot of phone ringing, everything. So anyways, I just soldered this chip on here, um, cleaned it with some alcohol and a toothbrush. Uh, that's after it looking like that corner ball looked like total garbage. And this I see is actually gonna be fine. What we've seen there is a little bit of a shine off the pad that that thing is sitting on. The camera itself really doesn't do this do this thing justice. Are we all the way down? I'm going to flip over and look at the other side here in a second. Hmm, looks pretty good. It's a, a little bit grainy, but I'm not going to nitpick over that because it will survive. I can't get under that side of it. I should put it right in here for you. Can't even find the chip. Okay, so let's test it. housing. If I was an iPhone 6 Plus test housing, 6S Plus test housing, oh, right over here next to me. Okay, pop this thing on housing. When they come in for no power, the first thing I do is hook my bench supply directly up to where the battery goes and see if we get any draw then. And you know, if it's got a short to ground on something that's hot, no matter what the power state of the board is, then, well, like VCC main, um, you'll get current, bam, right off the bat. So anyway, I check current whenever uh, the phone's off, and then I check current when I push the power button. And you can kind of tell right away if it's, if it's booting with no display, um, if it's not doing anything at all, if it gets just a little bit of a draw, like 70 milliamps and stops, that phone's not coming all the way on, so there's a lot that you can tell just by hooking up um, and putting power where the battery goes and reading your current. So 
Um, this one here, I've already done that. It was booting. I didn't have a screen hooked to it, so I hooked a screen to it. Lo and behold, it booted to white Apple logo and froze. Actually, white screen, black Apple logo. So, let's hook this thing up. I don't have my camera on my hands today. That's not a big deal. I'm still going to show you the phone without showing you all the black spots up close and person on this desk. Let's go ahead and hook up the dock connector. There we go. Last thing I'm hooking up is battery. Power button. Now before I did this repair, this phone would come up to white screen, black Apple logo, and it would sit here until the end of time. I've seen a lot of 5S's and 6's do that where it was actually the TriStar IC at fault to the point where a lot of times I'll change the TriStar IC before I'll even do a factory reset on this dude. It booted. So there we go. I threw some sticks at it. I won. This dude is going to be happy he's got his phone back and I didn't have to erase all of his shit. So um, there's another one in the pot for a defective TriStar IC. Now, I'm not just going to button this all, well, actually he sent in board only, so I'm not just going to like crank this thing right out the door, I'm going to finish cleaning my nasty flux off the board, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to sit here off a of camera and inspect this chip really good all the way around and make sure everything's good because I sit nit nitpick, I can't help myself, but customers get a lot better jobs as a result of my nitpicking, so it, it's a good thing. Um, so cool. A lot of interruptions, but this phone is fixed and I took a wild guess at the TriStar IC and, and fixed it. So, you know at the local Walmart when you walk by the Apple display down here in here in Farmington and they got all the Apple phones set up, they'll have like, you know, all the newest iPhones and at least one of them is always hung on an Apple logo. At least one of the iPads is always sitting there hung on a white screen with an Apple logo and every time I walk by I'm like, their chargers are smoking this shit. So. Uh, anyways, that's it for this video. If you've got one hanging on a white screen with a black Apple logo, it might be TriStar. You might be able to get away with just factory resetting it. Um, but this guy said it wouldn't show up in iTunes, so I guess I could have tried it in recovery mode. I've just gotten to where so often when I see this problem, it's TriStar IC, TriStar IC, one, one after the other. I started to say, but I got sidetracked. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is... Uh, be sure the chip is sound, make sure I've got all my flux cleaned off of it because sometimes if you leave flux on it and you send it out and it comes back two weeks later, sometimes you'll look at where the flux was and you'll actually be able to see where it is oxidized um, components and stuff. So um, clean the flux off. I also make sure that this is going to connect with iTunes and also make sure it's going to charge the battery. But um, I'm about 99.9% .9 sure that it will. I've just, I've been through so, so very many of these. So. Um, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.